you know, I got into this because I loved records. I loved Brenda Lee, I loved Elvis, I loved James Brown, I loved Jackie Wilson, I loved all these great, great artists, you know, that were just phenomenal. And because I loved the radio first before I could even buy records, you know. And I got into it because I loved music, you know, and records. And, uh, and American music was what was happening, uh, was we didn't get European records and unless it was a freak kind of novelty thing. Uh, but then when I finally, you know, signed on the dotted line and they started telling me I had to take airplanes, which I've always seen to this day, I'm still frightened to death, you know. Uh, because, hey, suppose if you have to be in London one day and in L.A. another day and, you know, and they're pushing me, you know, and trying to... And then you have the, the, the marketing campaigns and the boxes, you know, like Rice Krispies that they want to put you in and categories, which I never believed in because to me, whether it was James Brown or Brenda Lee or Jackie Wilson or Elvis, it was just rock and roll. That's all. This is from the new album. It's entitled Just Your Friends.
I was very young. I was 27. And so, you know, thrilled. I had a record contract. I had made it, I thought. You know, that was like, you know, what you think. When you, when you go from the bar to the, to the big concerts, you know, you, you have a sensation of, well, I'm here now. <laughs> you know, little do you know, there's a, a, a long road ahead and a lot of people who go that way, go that way. And then there's some survivors who keep, keep going, you know, keep going. Um, no, I, I, and you know, with the business, you know, I, 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 at the time I really wasn't looking. I didn't really care. I thought the party was going to go on forever. Well, it's gone on for 25 years. It's not too bad. But it was, it was, you know, you, you just, you know, you're, it's a euphoric kind of, and an adrenaline rush, and everything's going your way. You can't do anything wrong. Therefore, you kind of, in a way, go out of your way to make everything in a funny way, you, from sabotage to, to uh, uh, you know, as all the characteristics of rock and roll have. You fall into all kinds of, the road that all the musicians have been through, actors, actresses, whatever, you know. Uh, and uh, no, I was just thrilled. I was just like a puppy dog lost in a candy store, you know, just, just you know, push me that way and I'll go. I, I was just very excited. So I was so in, uh, in the high of, of being excited, you know, it, uh, that I didn't really care what, what the offer was, just as long as you know, I could you know, play and it seemed like a good party to me. Yeah! 
At that time, we were looking for names for the band, and the band would be so-and-so one week, and then so-and-so the other week. And matter of fact, uh, that started to get on my nerves so bad that I, I, sat, I sat down and uh, we came up with Mink DeVille, you know, uh, which was a good thing because I, I think without it, I don't think you would have had a lot of that pink Cadillac leopard skin stuff that was in vogue for a while. I don't think that would have ever happened. And I think uh, because of the band and the look of the band, promoted that. We had the haircuts, you know, we were the, we could have actually called ourselves the haircuts. I don't know. It was like, uh, yeah, we're, we're, I thought uh, at the time too, the, the image thing was, it was uh, just, well, it was late seventies. People still had that uh, layered kind of uh, look, you know, the Rolling Stones sort of uh, look. I guess, glitter look, you know. And I want it to look very much very American, very New York. I was from New York, proud of it. And you're gonna like it too, you know. It was like a 27-year-old tough guy bullshit, you know. It was, and it was, yeah, it was definitely calculated, you know. It was, uh, but that came, I think, through CBGB's, which was very competitive, you know. Uh, like, we wore leather jackets, but we wore capretta leather, Italian leather jackets. We didn't wear motorcycle jackets. You know what I mean? So to me, that it was a definite difference, you know? I, I, I don't know, it was, and it, and it all boils down to what, haircuts? No, I think also the band that, I've always had a great band, you know? I think we survived so long because my band has always been very supportive, really good really good band. We could play. See, none of the other CBGB's bands could play. They were terrible. They had no sense of showmanship or, or I hate to say show business, but I mean, you have to build a set where you have to captivate an audience. And it's, for me, it, it just seems very cliche to, you know, do the rave up number and everybody goes crazy and you go off. I always like at the end to quell the audience so they don't forget it. It's a quiet moment. Those quiet moments, I think you remember more than all the chaos and the banging. I mean.
Jesus, I was, it was to me a little medieval, like a tor some sort of wacky torture implement somebody cooked up to fry my brain. It was, oh, whoa, you know, it was like, it was terrifying. So I, I, I think that I, I fake cool real good. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good actor with trying to be cool, you know. Again, though, it's trying to be cool. Uh, so you have that stance and when you're 27 you can pull that off in a way because you can say even if you don't do it well well he's just young and angry or whatever you know it works to your advantage uh but it was i was terrified i was really i was pissing in my pants i was so scared man i was it's like just taking a little dog and throwing him out there you know it's like you're terrified in the city streets like cars whizzing by but it was all this, this ocean, vast, vast ocean of people. And you couldn't see anybody's faces. It was night, it was dark. The only thing you could see were cigarette lighters and puffs of smoke here and there. <laughs> yeah, and it was terrifying. Bring you home at night 
gravity of the situation at the time was, I mean, it was a, a, actually a real big mark in my career, but at the time it just, as I said, seemed like medieval torture. It was like, you know, I went from this little dumpy bar where people pissed on the wall to, you know, 50 million people. It's like, oh shit, man, where's the bar? You know, it's like, <laughs> it was really terrifying. Uh, <laughs> Tragedy is so misunderstood And everything she touches Yeah If she gets you calling her, baby She won't be satisfied Everything she touches Just seems to fly But yourself have been pushed in again and do that. Say, train you to your job. It's a slow train. The West Coast dealer say, want the front for you. Say, train you to your job. I've been so experienced and all, he know just what to do. Say, train you to your job. You must be tired of the street, my friend. Here's a place for you to rest your head. Train you to your time. But the price is never mentioned until it gets your best. Always spotless hands. Nobody to blame. Nobody but yourself. 
myself up in. Pushed in again in two days. Beijing and Sea are dry. It's a slow jam. And you and the doing things. <laughs> and if they get you cornered, oh, they'll be coming around again, and that's for sure. And everything they touch just seems to waste away. Always spotless hands, nobody to blame, nobody but yourself or them. Who's gonna get into that? They drink it, say I'll try. It's a slow drain. Slow drain. They drink it, say I'll try. It's a slow drain. They drink it, say I'll try. A slow drain. They drink it, say I'll try. It's a slow drain. They drink it, say I'll try. It's a slow drain. We're coming up now on 25 years. It's going to be, I think, next year. And uh, I finally got to do something that I, I would like to do. You know what I mean? I've always done what I wanted to do, but not always what I like to do. You know what I mean? You do what you have to do or what you, you, know, you want, you have to, you know. But I can, I can now, uh, I, I think I have somewhat of the respect of being around long enough and the, the public is there and they trust me. You know what I mean? After 25 years of shows, they trust me. They know they're going to come and they're going to see something uh, with flair and a little bit of uh, showbiz and a little sense of humor, but the music is always incredibly good because I have always such great musicians. And um, so I got to do a little bit what I, what I wanted to do, which is like <coughs> really the vibe, the feeling of this, this gig now. I, I hear this is a warehouse. It's, it's, I may have a little problems with, it, it may, you have to create an ambiance with this. You have to understand it's just the bass player and just the piano player. And I sit on a stool, smoke a lot of cigarettes, have a couple of drinks, and it's like, if you could walk into an imaginary, the coolest bar that you could actually sit with your girl and talk, and the band played great, great songs, uh, from stuff that, I, I, that I, I've written to, to uh, standards, you know what I mean? Old standards, such as uh, Let It Be Me, or Shake, Rattle, and Roll, or, uh, you know, uh, Chuck Willis stuff, you know, like It's Too Late, She's Gone, um, and Heaven Stood Still, and uh, Night Falls, uh, things that I've written years ago. And I never really had a chance to, to <clears throat> really quell them to the point where, you know, it's, it's, the focus is, is very, very intense.
gather around me Everybody I'm gonna tell you a story about Billy and Dupree Betty told Dupree She wanted a diamond ring Betty told Dupree She wanted a diamond ring Dupree told Betty I'll buy you anything. Where well, do be do baby, baby, you know. Baby, won't you be my wife? Do be do baby. Baby, won't you be my wife? She said, I'm your pretty baby. For the rest of your life Yeah, put your arms around me Like a cycle Round the sun Put your arms around me Like a cycle Round the sun Put your big arms around my way let it sleep down to the wall. Yeah! Yeah! to the, the concept with, with breaking the band down, to breaking, you know, the DeVille is fine, it's just the mink kind of gets a little bit, a little too luxe, you know, a little too luxurious, luxurious and a little too cushy. Um, and I really felt when I got rid of the sax and the piano player, because I love the piano player and I love sax, but I really felt that I have to depend more upon myself to perform, you know. And when there's less people in the band, you really have to pay more attention because there's not going to be somebody covering your mistakes. And I see myself a little clearer, not that clear, but I mean, you know, it's a little clearer that what I can do and what I, what I and I think, as I said before, I have the respect of, of the people who bought my records and, and seen my shows for years now. They're willing to trust me where they know that 
uh, they're going to get something very special. You know, they're going to get something good, and uh, and they won't mind paying whatever they're paying for the ticket because they'll walk away. I'll say, Jesus, I'd like to see that again. And those are usually, to me, I don't know. Every show I ever came out of and said, Gee, I'd like to see that again, was was like John Hammond or, or Muddy Waters or whatever. You know, changes your life. It says, Boy, I, I hope he comes back again. I hope I get to see it next year. So we're trying this out. It, it, so far, it's really been incredible with just the piano player and the bass player. It's really been incredible. I mean, it's like I say, if, if you walked into the coolest little bar, like it, ver it has very much a New Orleans sound, you know. And it's not so much, you know, to, to not look at, to listen to, you know what I mean? It's not the guitar player and this, and then there's that, and there's this. It's very simple. Just great, great songs. Great songs, you know, that I, I love to sing. You know, stuff that I grew up with, and, uh, and it gives me a chance to put some of the stuff in that I wrote that uh, I haven't been able to do before because the band was so goddamn big. It's hard to make everybody that quiet, you know? And of course, you still get a couple of the crazies who yell out, uh, maybe tomorrow! You know, and they see you have no saxophone player, so how are you gonna do that? I love and emotion! And then, you know, it's, 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 okay, come on, give me a break here. Uh, let me, let me, I've been doing this for a while. Let me pick the songs. You know? So, but uh, really, it's, it's been consistently very, 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 very good. Very good. Do you understand English real good? Because sometimes when I speak to the German people, I don't know if they understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, I try to speak slower. Uh, of course, this is from the Le Chablou album, which I was very fortunate with working with wonderful, wonderful musicians. Jean-Claude Petit, great string arranger, great uh, cellos, French horns, violins. And then, uh, of course, there was a rhythm section, which was Ron Tut and Jerry Sheffield, which were Elvis's rhythm section. I uh, wrote a lot of songs on that with uh, Doc Thomas, who will say the last dance for me. And uh, at Steve Douglas, greatest saxophone player in the world. So uh, let's do it.
side of the dawn Know that all this belongs to me One celestial rhapsody stood still.
Funny, I was uh, in, in New Mexico, which is very large Latin American community. It's all Mexicans and a lot of Native Americans and a lot of wacko, crazy artists. So I was sitting in this real dumpy bar. It's a little tiny bar called Mary's, and it's it's in in the town where they shot Young Guns. It's an old Western town, and they used it in I think Lonesome Dove. It's a cowboy town, but it's a real one. Okay, Billy the Kid used to hang out there. It's right near Santa Fe. So I was sitting there, and there comes this guy, and he was kind of drunk, and I was a little, I was feeling good, and so we started talking. And uh, I said, hey, you must be a musician, I'm in. So I said, yeah, I play a little bit. So he said, uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, Bo Diddley, he's from, uh, uh, Fla not Flagstaff, he's from, um, Roswell. He was the sheriff of Roswell. You ready for that? True. True story. 
So uh, I started talking to the guy as if he must know all the Mexican artists that I know. Uh, and it's funny, his name was Willie too. It was, it was strange. And so I, I started throwing some names at him, like, you know, um, Amaya Mendoza, the Los Trasases, and Los Panchos, and the old Ranchero kind of groups. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. And I said, what kind of music do you like? He said, oh, man, I like Deep Purple. <laughs> I nearly fell over. Yeah. <laughs> I nearly fell over. Matu Hupu. Matu Yeah. <laughs> like, I think my head went wang, 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 wang. So you never know what people's musical tastes are going to be. So I hope that works out real good for you. Because you never know. America is totally, uh, that's such a different marketplace, you cannot believe. I, I think that they don't really have uh, an appreciation for, for what is, uh, uh, like, what, what gives, I think, a musician longevity, which is uh, good music. I think uh, they're, uh, they're, it's uh, sort of like uh, cornflakes or Rice Krispies or something, you know, it's, here today, gone tomorrow, whatever happened, that box of cereal, it was good. 
and this is, well, it's a concept thing put together by a producer or a manager who then takes it to a producer and says, okay, there they're, 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 they're four or five great looking kids, the, the little girls are gonna love them who are just hit, hitting being uh, pubescent and uh, hey, the money's there, you know? So this becomes just but I could, I could smell some of that back when, when I was with Capital, you know, the first records that I made. We walk the street and I hold your hand And as we walk along I can understand How a love can live In this desolate land Broken windows and broken hearts And you are cheated before you start Was there ever a chance? No, there was never a chance But then you love mm, Love and emotion o'clock I run down your street baby to your block and up five flights of stairs <laughs> up five flights of stairs and in your laughter there's mission bells colored lanterns and carousels and in this hallway is home no I'm not so alone First, uh, first film epic I've ever done. <laughs> you know, it was really, it was, you know, huge. I'd never been out in front of uh, that many people. So all I know is I was thrown out there and boing, okay, light the cigarette, look cool, man. Look around, put your hand in your pocket, you know, act like you don't care. Yeah, it was all bullshit, you know, really. I mean, uh, it came across <laughs> very cool. I mean, 
Oh yeah, oh I, yeah, I was, I was, was cool. That? <laughs> but uh, as the years went on, after actually the first biggie, the first big one, you know, uh, hearing it from other people, uh, you know, that they've probably first heard us there and what a, what a huge amount of exposure it was, I didn't realize. I mean, I just knew a lot of goddamn people out there. Woo! But I didn't realize that these are people who were um, well, later on, who would probably get married and remember those songs because they went out and bought the record and danced to those songs, which is, is, is a fantastic thing. So it was, yeah, it was really a kind of a, a level in my career that was very good. I didn't realize it at the time, you know. So <laughs> I heard it from other people's mouths, though. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. I've been hearing it uh, really. Uh, to this day, you know, to, to, to this past tour, you know, um, and I think in I, I, every tour, you know, Jesus, I've been a fan of yours since I saw you on Rock Ballads, you know. Every night, I have the same reoccurring dream There you are, just so fine, standing next to me You see me there's a Lord standing here and here. A low Christ said, I've had more real. I'm into your eyes that tell me a thing. The feeling bears, they start to ring. And you are mine, yes, you are mine, yes, you are Just a kiss and a slow embrace You promised me like I promised you Stand by me, baby, stand by you I want to hold you close Say something, love, that's all I need Hello, quiet singing
I've always been very fortunate too of being able to pick myself up, you know, and dusting myself off, saying, "Well, there's always another record company, you know," and you go to the next bunch of assholes, <laughs> and you deal with them, and it, it's a slightly different slant on it, but it's always the same bullshit. But I, I, I don't know. I, Jack Nietzsche, who just died, uh, got a year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, we were laughing about it, we were, you know, because Jack was uh, talking to somebody uh, in a, one of the major record companies. And <clears throat> uh, he said to me, wouldn't it be great, man? And I always, th I think of this all the time. Wouldn't it be great if, there, if, if you had a record company and they actually really liked records, liked music? You know, because there's so many of those cold sons, but you just become product. And I never want to ever think of my music as product. It's not, it's, uh, I would say it's my religion. That's what I always say, you know, it's my one belief in life. And, and as I said before, when you meet couples who got married and bought your first record and dance to that, and you know, and th this is a, it's a wonderful thing. It's great, it's really, it's, it's pretty cool. You can't buy that. And the record companies can't have that. And I would like to dedicate it to the fan club. All three of you, thank you for coming. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I'd like to dedicate this to you. You'll get the message. This was written by Mr. Eddie Bow. Every dog has got his daily. When I look back at like, you know, uh, Debbie Harry and the Blondies, or even Patti Smith, or even those poor old Ramon guys, or whatever, you know, I kind of look back at it now, I can look at it with a fondness for, well, at least we shook up the business. Not bad for a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I don't know how it worked, but it happened.